If you need a retaining wall, your options typically are a timber retaining wall, a concrete sleeper wall, or a Besser block retaining wall. So which one is a better choice? So, timber retaining walls, in my opinion, they're out. You don't use them. Timber in the ground, it's perfectly sensible that they should fail. So a timber wall is going to be cheaper. You'll get away with beautifying some parts of the property, but anything that is inching towards a structural requirement, it's not smart. So that leaves us two arguably sensible practical avenues. Now, today, the concrete sleeper construction with the galvanized steel post in a concrete pier is on trend. It's happening a lot. Personally, I think it's a little bit too soon to tell if they are smart because retaining walls can take decades to fail. Uh, and sometimes they fail the entire time until they finally keel over and die. Um, that being said, I can see practicality in them. Uh, the success of those walls is predicated on the depth of that pier. Typically, whatever you see above the ground, there should be 1.5 to 1.2 below the ground in order to have that wall last a long time. The advantage to a concrete sleeper wall is typically it requires less excavation because there's no footing that, uh, and a large footing that especially a large retaining wall would require. Um, it can be cost effective on the excavation front. Now, you're limited of course to certain areas where you can execute a, a panel and post wall because if you can't get the depth of that post, if you're hitting rocks left, right and center, then that wall is redundant. That, that build, that type of build is redundant. You cannot execute it. So there is an advantage to a concrete sleeper wall. The disadvantage to the concrete sleeper wall is that those posts are independent of each other. The fact that you've got concrete sleepers, though they may be strong, they're not fixed to the posts on either end. So if there is an imperfect post anywhere in that construction, the other two aren't gonna pick it up. The superior way to do that is to sandwich form ply between the galvanized posts, drill through the post and thread steel bars and core fill that cavity, those bays with concrete. And that will be a, a much better build. You don't really see that. Um, which leaves us the cream of the crop, really. The reason why Besser block retaining walls are happening as often as they are is because the footing and the wall are effectively one piece. The footing has starter bars coming out of it and it's heavy gauge steel. The blocks are laid over those starter bars. There's horizontal bars laid as well. And after that is done, it's filled with free flowing concrete and this locks everything together. Now, in order for that wall to fail, the entire wall has to move. The wall, the footing uh, has to slide. It would have to be a very badly built wall if that block work leans on the footing. Something has happened with that steel placement or the core fill was um, not wet enough and it maybe didn't reach the bottom of the wall. That could be very problematic. So a well-built Besser block retaining wall should outlive your grandkids. They're certainly dearer, but it is once it's done correctly, it is definitely a build once option and is always encouraged to go down that road. Very dear, but you will sleep at night. The other ones, depends on the site. So I hope this helps you gain a little bit of clarity around uh, which one of these walls would suit you best or which one you think you could get some function out of for your particular situation. If not, reach out to me, we'll have a chat.